Hello everybody, we are back here on Call of the Wild, the Angler, with episode 2 of our brand new account playthrough. Today we're going to be doing the Taylor's Tackle Academy missions. I know so many of you have been wanting to get these done. I've seen so many questions about it, so let's get straight into it and I'll kind of show you guys how I do it along the way. Float fishing uses a float, a hook, and some bait. Once the bait is in the water, the float remains on the surface and acts as an indicator of a fish is if a fish is nibbling or biting. If nothing bites after a few minutes, you can try reeling in and casting in a different location. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's go ahead and press Q to open up the quick menu. And we will equip the blood worm. There we go. Catch a fish using the blood worm. There we go. I see the fish. It looks like it is a yellow perch. Let's see if we can get him to bite. There we go. He has officially been hooked. Let's reel this little guy in and get this objective completed. There we go, our first fish with the blood worm. And it looks like we actually got some fluorocarbon as well as pearl barley. Man, you get a ton of good stuff for doing this. The hook depth is a measure of the distance between the float and hook. It can be changed before casting by using, and it will show your uh, controls for whatever platform you're using here. A lower hook depth allows bait to reach slightly deeper areas in the water, luring fish out that are swimming deeper or hiding out in nooks and crannies. So we're going to go ahead and change the depth right here. There we go. You kind of just got to go up and down with it and it'll complete the, uh, there we go. Yeah, so. There we go. I kind of just go back and forth and then it completes it. Catch a fish by float fishing. Okay, so we'll go with the uh, one foot hook depth this time just to do something a little bit different. And also I think I'm going to increase the drag a little bit as well. Now typically the hook depth does not matter a ton. Um, for some species, it will matter more than others. Like, for example, with a catfish, you may need to go one foot or deeper. Uh, with something like uh, pike or musky or largemouth bass, I've seen that it really doesn't matter what depth you have it at. They'll pretty much always bite it. In most cases, if you don't know what the depth is, just leave it at the default. And if that doesn't work, try a little bit deeper. And usually you'll be able to figure out what depth the fish are biting at at that current moment. There we go. That looks to be a crappie. And I think that actually might be a little bit better one than what we got last time in episode one of this series. Let's see. We've got it hooked. Uh, yeah, that definitely seems to be a better one. It's putting more tension on the rod, so... Hopefully this is a little bit better. And that's actually a green sunfish. Okay, nice. We got ourselves our first green sunfish. 0.49 pounds. 13 credits, 4 XP. Not too bad. Well done, you've learned about float fishing, baits, and hook depth. Next class covers hook sizes and building your own rig. It will be available upon completion of the challenge. There we go. 100 XP, which is actually pretty amazing. And there we go. We are now into beginner challenge one, which is just catch five fish. Now it's almost nighttime, which means pretty soon it's going to switch to the fish that bite at night primarily. That's something a lot of people seem to not know about the angler is that different fish will be biting at different times of day. It's not going to be like a universal thing where every fish bites all the time. If you want to be fishing at night, you're going to be catching sturgeon, uh, walleye, sauger, etc. If you're in the daytime, you'll be catching stuff like bass, pike, panfish, trout. So there is different fish that will bite at different times of day. And if you want to know exactly what fish are going to be biting, uh, go to the handbook and you can click on each fish. It'll tell you down here what traits they have. If they have a trait that says, or that shows the moon, that means it's a nighttime fish, and oh, I almost missed that. I almost missed that, but I heard it bite. There we go. That is our first fish for this challenge right here. Man, that caught me off guard, but we got it, so it's okay. But as I was saying, you can click on each fish, and it'll show whether it's a daytime or nighttime fish. If you don't see either the little symbol with the sun or the moon, then it can bite at day or night. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of fish that are day or night fish, or like one or the other, I should say, but then there's a few that are both, like the tiger muskie, you're gonna catch them all the time. I have heard some people say that they've struggled with this catch five fish challenge, but to be honest, if you just stay at the little dock that it tells you to go to in the previous one, and keep casting out with the blood worms, you'll be catching sunfish, you'll be catching crappie, you'll be catching perch, and you should be able to get those five fish pretty quickly. There we go, just about probably 20 seconds after I said that, we've got ourselves a yellow perch. So yeah, you can get your five fish off of this dock pretty easily. It's just a matter 
of uh, continuing to cast out off of this dock and don't be reeling in super quick. When you're fishing with the, the bobber and the bait, you don't want to be reeling it in like immediately. You want to let it sit out there for like a minute or two before you decide to reel in and cast somewhere else because if you're just casting out for like 10, 15 seconds and then you see nothing and you reel back in, you're probably not going to be catching fish because it usually takes a little bit longer than 10 or 15 seconds to have one go for it. Uh, unless you're lucky like we are in this scenario. We've got a fish almost immediately and oh, that is actually going to be, that might be a really good crappie actually. That is the most tension we have seen on this rod aside from when we got the smallmouth in one of the earlier challenges. And yeah, that's our first silver crappie. You love to see it. That is definitely our biggest fish of this playthrough in terms of metal. I think we did get the smallmouth, which was slightly larger, but this is the highest metal ranking we've got so far. So that is a really nice thing to see. You know, since we got that from right over here, I'm just gonna cast out in the same spot and see if we can hook into another crappie. Definitely like getting the crappie as they seem to give a good amount of XP and uh, money for our current setup. And th there we go, instantly another fish. That seems to be a green sunfish or a bluegill though. That is definitely not a crappie, but you know, it's still gonna count for the challenge and that's really all that matters at the end of the day. There we go, we hooked into another one. This guy is definitely a little bit smaller. Let's just crank this guy in. There we go. A bronze green sunfish. There we go. I see the last fish that we need going for it. I think that one is a yellow perch. It looked like a yellow perch based on the uh, shape of it. Come on. There we go. That is going to be the last fish needed for the challenge. Beautiful. You love to see it. That will be a challenge completion right there. 0.80 pound yellow perch. Not too shabby. Now, in order to complete this, we got to go to the challenge board. So let's head over there right now. And there we go. And that also gets us to level three as well, which is amazing. We're going to be slowly leveling up and unlocking new gear and stuff. Let's go ahead and start beginner class two. This class discusses the relevance of gear strength and hook size. After building a rig with some new gear, you will head to another location to learn about hook sizes. Stronger gear allows you to reel in larger or stronger fish. A strong line withstands more tension, but requires a stronger rod and reel to be compatible and effective. So there we go. We just got a new setup for completing that. And now we have a second rod and reel. Uh, this is the rod builder where you can set up your own tackle, select an equipment slot, Choose the float fishing rig style and use the equipment given for the class to build a new rig. Let's go ahead to right here, do float fishing rig. Then we're going to select the maiden. Uh, we're going to get the tyro. We're going to get the four pound fluorocarbon as well as the cigar float, the size 10 hook and the blood worm. There we go. It has told us that we made it. So now we got to go to the marked location, which is going to require the vehicle if we want to get there fast. So. Let's jump into the vehicle and uh, see if we can get over there pretty quickly. So as you guys can probably tell by now, it's very good to do the Taylor's Tackle Academy if you're just starting out. I mean, we just got an entire new fishing setup that's double the strength of our starter setup just for completing the first mission in the Taylor's Tackle Academy. It honestly is just an amazing way to get some gear early on and will help all of you out so much. I wish this type of a thing would have been available when the game first released because this would have been super helpful in getting gear early on. Because for those of you that are not familiar with how the Angler released, it started out by releasing on PC about a year ago and then just uh, less than a week ago it released on console for the first time. So us PC players have had this game for a year at this point and it has changed so much over time. When it first released it was nowhere near the game that it is now. And it's only going to get better from here on. All right, we'll take the turn right here. In fact, I think I heard something. I think I heard a collectible. Oh, nope, it's not a collectible. It's one of the warden favor things. Report that. That's 10 XP. So it's always good to report those anytime that you see them. There we go. We're at the bridge. This is one of the best locations that you can fish for stuff like catfish and sturgeon. This area is absolutely incredible. 
As a rule of thumb, only small fish can be caught with, or small fish can only be caught with small hooks. However, you might also occasionally attract big fish with with a small hook. I accidentally clicked through that first one without reading it because this car noise just got bugged out and was just continuously playing. So that's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and try to catch a fish with a size 10 hook. So we're just going to chuck it off of here and see if we can get anything good. But as I was saying, this area is a phenomenal spot for diamond channel catfish as well as diamond sturgeon. So if you've got the gear that's heavy enough to take them on, go out here with a size 5 hook in minnows or something like that. You'll be catching a crap load of fish with a decent chance of ending up hooking into a diamond at some point. Obviously, if you want to target just the diamonds and golds, you can use a larger hook than a size 5, but I typically use a size 5 here just so I'll be catching a lot of fish and earning a ton of money and XP in the process. That's the thing that I always do here on my main account because it is such a good location. You'll be catching fish all the time. So I think for this location right here, we're going to switch baits. We're going to go to the eggs since they gave us some. And we will see if we can manage to hook into either a trout or potentially a sturgeon as it is getting a little bit later. Oh, there we go. That's a smallmouth. That looks to be a decent smallmouth, in fact. I think that might be a decent one. There we go. Fish on. Putting a little bit of strain on us. This is probably a three or four pound smolly. Come on. Now with these bigger fish, you will need to secure catch. So you want to reel it up as far as you can, as well as holding that uh, right click or whatever the equivalent is on your platform and then hold the button that it says to to secure the catch. And that is gonna be a three pound smallmouth bass. 46 credits, not bad. Not bad at all, so let's accept that. The next catch will target larger fish, so we will use a hook size 7. You will find one with your equipment. Equip it to your tackle before you cast out. Choosing a large hook excludes smaller fish. However, choose a hook too large and you might only get a few, if any, bites. Make sure to watch the tension on your line and manage it by varying your drag if necessary. Bigger fish pull harder. So, so now would be a good time to talk about how the hook sizes kind of work in this game. If you are using, let's use pike for an example. If you are using a size three hook with the pike, you're gonna catch big silvers, golds, and diamonds. So you'll be catching less fish than if you were using a smaller hook, but they're gonna be at least a big silver. If you were to upsize it to a size two hook, then you would end up catching only gold and diamond pike, but you may be waiting like 20, 30, 40 minutes to get a bite. So it's one of those things where the bigger the hook, the bigger the fish, but you'll be catching less fish. So if you want a just a crap load of fish, use a small hook. If you want to go for quality over quantity, use a larger hook. And there's guides to all of the different hook sizes you would possibly want to know about for each species in the game and what type of uh, size of fish you'd be able to catch with each hook. All that info is in the official angler discord in the resource hub channel. So be sure to go check that out if you want some information at your fingertips pretty much any time you could possibly need it. Uh, there is a link to the angler discord in the description so be sure to check them out there we go size 7 hook along with the eggs and then i believe we have to take the rod out and cast out and then once we catch the fish we will end up completing this uh stage of the mission there we go we've got another bass going for it question is will this one be bigger than the last one there we go we've hooked into it i think it's a little bit smaller yeah, it's definitely smaller, so this one's easier to get in. There we go. 1.69 pounds. That should complete this stage of the mission. There we go. You've learned about gear strength, hook sizes, and how to catch small or large fish. Use this knowledge to your advantage to catch more fish. And just like that, we're level 4. And another 100 credits and 100 XP. So now we just got to catch 5 fish. So this is going to be... A little bit easier than the previous mission because we don't really have to use any specific gear or anything we just got to go ahead and catch five fish and there we go fast travel location unlocked so this is right here on the map there should be a few of them in this area so we want to grab that real quickly and now that we've unlocked it I'm actually gonna head back to the beginning area to complete this catch five fish task I think we're gonna go back to the blood worm with a size 10 hook that way we can quickly get five uh, sunfish or crappie or perch to just complete this mission. 
So we are back over here on the dock that we had to go to for the first Taylor's Tackle Academy mission. Let's see if we can get our five fish here pretty quickly. I got a feeling it's going to be faster than staying at that bridge. There we go. Fish number one. That appears to be a green sunfish. And in fact, I think it's actually a decent one, maybe. Yeah, it's a nice little silver. 0.73. Not a bad fish, honestly. One thing you will definitely notice when playing the angler, if you're a player of the Hunter Call of the Wild, you will immediately notice that you do not get nearly as many golds and diamonds in the angler as you do in the Hunter. They're just not nearly as plentiful, and in fact, like a gold is considered to be a trophy fish in the angler. So, if you get a gold, it's a pretty good sized fish. Most of the fish you'll get will be mid sized to small silvers and below. But you know, every once in a while, you pull in a few of those golds and on rare occasions, a diamond. And it looks like a uh, yellow perch is on the menu this time. We got our second fish for the challenge. There he goes. Let's get this guy reeled in. And there we go, a bronze yellow perch. There is our third fish, another green sunfish. The green sunfish are biting like crazy right now. We are seeing a lot of these little guys. I guess it must be a good time of day for them. Because we have caught quite a few of them throughout the uh, Taylor's Tackle Academy missions that we've been doing. You'll love to see it. There's our fourth fish. I think that's a perch. No, that is definitely not a perch. That is a crappie. When it's, when it's swimming straight towards you, it can be a little bit difficult to tell until it turns sideways and then you can see that uh, exact profile of the fish. That is a tiny crappie. That might be the smallest one that we have caught so far. And there we go. There is our fifth fish, another black crappie. Let's go ahead and wait for this guy to bite. And there's the strike. Let's go ahead and reel him in. This will be all we need to complete beginner challenge two for the Taylor's Tackle Academy. Point 23 black crappie. He may not be big, but he is just what we needed. And there we go. Now we go to the challenge board and that will complete the mission. And here we go. 200 XP as well as a spinner and 100 credits. That is amazing. So let's go ahead and start the advanced class. But I think we're going to do that in another episode. So be sure to leave a like as well as a subscribing to the channel if you're brand new and you found this helpful. Leave a comment down below and let me know uh, if you have any questions about something in this video or if there's a particular uh, just really just anything. Just ask me any questions you want about the game. I will do my best to answer them. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.